Hello everyone, this is video number two. I hope you're all fine. And today we will be splitting sandwich walls, making new end caps and joints. After that, we will be able to save them to our database. So good luck with this video. So in a previous video, we have made all our sandwich walls. Now we will try to split them. But before we do that, we will make an end cap in a different project and we will draw a, an end cap in a, for the database information. So we start with a polyline, we take a green polyline and start drawing a geometry for your end cap with the specific dimensions. For example, here I draw the opening for the insert in my sandwich wall. I know that the angle is 13 degrees. And then I go up. Make sure that you have just one polyline. If not, then join several polylines in one to have the only one polyline. Once we have geometry done, we take a red polyline and we will draw the boundary for the reinforcement. For the outer layer, 70 millimeters. And then 20 millimeters offset. And finish with one polyline. Once we have reinforcement boundary uh, marked, we take the black uh, polyline and draw the layer uh, boundary, but I also make a reference line with a different polyline. And then make another reference line and draw another layer boundary. Once we have them, we can delete reference lines and we have uh, our end cap done in the database. But I also have origin line mark. So I place origin point mark in the left corner and it's done. Now you can copy and paste for the level one and level two this detail of the end cap and just put some uh, measurements for the level one. And now we're going to make a new end cap in this project and later on we will export to our sports hall project. So I give a name and description. And first we select the geometry with origin point and one polyline. Select reinforcement boundary. and then layer boundary, those two black polylines. Once we have all the boundaries selected, I want to have some points visible in my shop drawing. So I mark that point three and point six will be visible on the shop drawing. Now I go to level of detail one and I have actually the same end cap just with measurements and I place it in a database for level one, specify origin point again, now I select level of detail 2 and select all the end cap polylines with the origin point. Make sure that you have the same points visible. Now you can confirm with OK. Now we can export our end cap to the sports hall project. So I just select end cap and the project and confirm with OK. Export. Okay. okay, now let's go back to our plan and try to split the wall. But before I check if I have my end cap ready, it's fine. Now select split walls vertically. Select the wall you want to split and then specify the break point, uh, the break, uh, point distance. It's 16 uh, millimeters distance. And then I just specify breaking points according to my modular grid line. So I just select on line and then I continue with each modular system line.
once I am done, I confirm my breaking points by clicking enter and then I choose the end cap I have already imported to my project. So it's this end cap and then I confirm by OK. And now what's your floor plan, how it changes? One wall becomes into many walls and you can see your end caps, your, your profile you have drawn and the distance between the walls is 16 millimeters. Once you have all your walls splitted, you can check them on a 3D view. And most of them should be colored in green because uh, now they are in requirements with the administrative tool. So they don't exceed any more mass or uh, weight or uh, length limits. So now we'll try to make a corner detail. So I go back to my NCAPS project and make again a new detail for the corner. I click on new, give a new name. We basically repeat all the same steps we did with the previous NCAP, but just to confirm it, I make a description again. Okay, select geometry, but first mark origin point, very left corner. Select reinforcement boundary. which is red polyline. Select layer boundary. There are two black polylines. And then for level one detail, select level one end cap. Level two is without measurements and origin point. Make sure you have all the visible points and then export your sports hole project. Select the end cap and export. And we confirm it. We go back to our plan and now we see that we don't have any end caps chosen yet for this wall. So I go to edit wall properties and then I specify that my left corner should be end cap number 808. I have just made one. I confirm it. Update uh, lift and bracing. Then I see that I need another end cap for my joint. So I click on this wall. I also added this wall. And then I choose the right corner and cap 801. I confirm it. Also update and confirm with exit. Now I have it ready for the joint. To create a joint, go to the joints and then select new, give a name. In this case, it will be 42 corner joint. Describe it a bit, 42 sandwich corner joint, and then click OK. Now, basically, we have to specify where our walls are located, what end cap it has, and then mirror or place it in the right position. So this is my wall number one, my wall number two with the end cap 801. Then I specify that this wall is moved a bit. And then I have a joint. And between, in between, I have to make 16 millimeters gap, as I do for all the split walls. Now we have to type in casting materials. And you can specify the wall and what type of uh, casting material you want to use. This is basically casting material list that is uh, placed in a database, but you can create your own uh, casting materials. You can specify which view you want to see, but in this case we will not be using uh, wire loops, we will be using another fixture plates, which number I can remember by my mind, but you can go also and check in a, a casting material list, then I specify the view and how it is going to be placed. But before I have to make a new uh, insert, I also choose from the list. 
this one, then the view, and then count. I have to specify my position on a joint. It's a coordinate system where we have to specify the coordinates, how we want to place them, what is the rotation and sinking. So now for the other one. But you can just basically just type in the coordinates you want to move them and you can see in the preview and change them whenever you want. And now I say that the site is front and back, front and back. And after we have all the fixtures, we have to say how many we want to use them and how they are going to be placed. Then I say that the setup too will be how, uh, what's the measurement between the inserts. But if I choose setup one, then I specify how many of them I will have and when is the first point and the uh, that bottom point. And now I have my joint done. It's time to join the walls. I select the walls I want to join. And then I select the joint from my project that I have just made. I'll give a name. And check the setups for the inserts. And then apply if everything is right. And update all lifts and bracings. Now we have our joint done. We can also go to 3D view and check how it looks like. How, if we are having two inserts as we have set it. And now we are going to make a straight wall connection using wire loops. So I go back to joints and then I make a new joint again. I click on new. I give a name again. Usually it should be according to your naming system. But this time it will be 42 straight joint, just for understanding. And then I say that I will use wire loops. I indicate my sandwich walls. And then I will try to place them in one line. But first I give the end caps they have. And now I will mirror one wall. And then I see that I have to rotate it. So I rotate it 90 degrees. And then because I have 16 millimeters gap, I give 8 millimeters for one side and 8 for the other side. And then I have to type in casting materials. I add one and another one casting material. And I specify which name is that from the casting material list. And the wire loop is uh, 0242. I give the wire loop for the other wall also. And then I need to change the view. The cutting view is the view number two. And now I see that it's not in the right position, so I have to rotate it 90 degrees. And the other one 90 degrees. But then I have to move them, so I move it I get in the X axis 48 and Y axis 60. And now I see that they should be in the right position right now. And then countersinking and the side where they are placed. After that, we need to show the placing of the casting materials. So I choose setup one, indicate how many inserts I will have. The first one will be 200 millimeters from the edge and from the bottom 200. And then I want to have three inserts. I click OK and now join walls again. Select the walls I want to join, enter, and then from my project, I choose just created end cap. I check if everything is right. Settings, click OK, and then specify the joint origin point on the modular line and apply. Now I can see that it sits in my walls. I can check 3D model and see that I have the right number of inserts. I have one insert, two and three inserts. And once you are done with all the walls and splitting and joints, you can save the walls in a database. So click on a command save walls and select all, or if you want select by selection, 
then select sandwich world and give a name for example 101 so we know that this is for the ground floor now wait a second and you will see that some of all the walls got the names but some of the walls are the same so they got the same name and basically those uh, saving uh, names got also in the project manager so you can go to the project manager open your project you are working on sports hall and then go to the element marks and you can see that this is saved in a database and you can see all the elements here with the necessary information about them.